Welcome to worship. Today in our worship, we celebrate another of the year's turning points, remembering that Christ is the light who shines in the dark. Sawin, the year's beginning, the coming of the dark. Here's a song. Stags give tongue, winter snows, summer goes. High, cold blow, sun is low, brief his day, seas give spray. Fern clumps redden, shapes are hidden, wild geese raise wanted cries. Cold now girds, wings of birds, icy time, that's my rhyme. The clocks have been changed, darkness is now encroaching upon our waking day. Halloween and All Saints will soon be upon us, as will November, the month for remembering the dead. But we can be sure that in the darkness, Christ, the light of the world, is with us. Our souls wait for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. Out of the depths we have cried to you, O Lord, hear our voice. With our whole hearts we want to praise you. O Lord, hear our voice. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? We will wait for the Lord, our souls wait, and in his word do we hope. Our psalm of the week is Psalm 32. This psalm was probably written in 1034 BCE, after David felt himself forgiven by God for his adultery with Bathsheba. Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away, though my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up as by the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, so righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright of heart. The Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. Let us pray. God, you have always given bread for the coming day. And though we may be poor, today we believe. God, you have always given strength for the coming day. And though we may be weak, today we believe. God, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though sometimes of anxious heart, today we believe. God, you have always kept us safe in trials, and now, tried as we are, today we believe. God, you have always marked the road for the coming day, and though it may be hidden, today we believe. God, you have always lightened the darkness we have, and though the winter will soon be with us, today we believe. God, you have always spoken when the time was ripe, and though you may be silent just now, today we believe. And believing, we pray together out loud the words you first taught your disciples so many years ago, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. First John chapter 1 verse 5 This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. John chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right, because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. Samhain, the coming of the darkness. The early Celtic Christians, like the Jewish Church of New Testament times, measured their days from sunset to sunset and their seasons from dark to light and back to dark again. So the festival of Samhain, at the start of the darkest time of the year, was the beginning of the year, a time of new beginnings. This seems a bit strange to us, living in a society where there's no stopping for the darkness. 24-hour petrol, 24-hour groceries, workplaces on the go through all 24 hours of the day. We need not heed the darkness because we can make everything light. Yet we're now being warned that the power cuts that have in previous years affected New York, Rome and many other big cities will soon be affecting us. What will we do as a society when you cannot make the darkness go away? We live in a country where there is no stopping for the season of darkness, no understanding that vegetables and flowers grow at some points of the year and not at others. In the global garden that we tend, everything is always available. We need not heed the seasons with their scarcity and abundance because we can make everything available in great amounts all the time. Of course, both continual light and ever-available strawberries have serious disadvantages. Apart from impoverishing our souls, they also waste the earth's resources and impoverish fellow human beings in their production. And what about the darkness of the soul? Need we heed this awfulness? Or can we, in this culture of light which reveals nothing, ignore the coming of the darkness, the black despair of another winter, the November remembering of the dead? Is that why we turn our eyes instead towards Advent and Christmas, all bright tinsel and dazzling angels? Surely that's what we really need to keep us going through the dark months. David Adam, Anglican priest based at Lindisfarne Abbey, has written a book called Tides and Seasons, in which he reminds us all that our lives revolve round the seasons and in themselves follow a tidal seasonal pattern. We experience high tides and low tides, spring times and autumn times. We need to experience high tides and low tides, spring times and autumn times, to lead complete and fulfilled lives. And he points out that we all move inexorably from springtime to winter, incoming tide to low tide, in our own lives. I think this time of year is like the ebb tide. We've had the delights of summer, Winter is still to hit us with all its ferocity, but the darkness is drawing in 
and the cold and wet are near at hand. Yet David Adam sees God's hand in it all. It is your tide that pulls me, Lord. Draw me to yourself. When one tide ebbs, another flows. Nothing is lost, only it suffers a tide change. Lord of life, when the tides wane, grant me a hand till I rise again. When the strand is becoming wide, keep me safe at the ebb tide. Having a festival or celebration at this time of year is nothing new, nor is confined to British culture. Bonfires have been associated with autumn since pre-Christian times. The word bonfire comes from the French bon feu, or from the bone fires of the slaughtered cattle who were cooked on fires because they could not be overwintered. People lit fires to beg the sun not to leave them during winter, making fires as a pledge that spring would once again come. The pre-Christian Celts commemorated the dead on October the 31st, their New Year's Eve, and believed that the spirits of the dead walked about on earth then. The bonfires were lit to welcome these spirits. The early Christian church couldn't eradicate this tradition, so in 837 established the Feast of All Saints on November the 1st and the Commemoration of All Souls on November the 2nd. And so we kept Halloween the Eve of All Hallows, on October the 31st. I'm sure we all have pleasant memories of guising and ducking for apples on Halloween night, with little thought of what it was really all about. We weren't disguising ourselves to chase away evil spirits or outwit evil forces. Today's children probably have no idea either. No idea that Halloween was never seen as a celebration of darkness and evil, even in pagan times. The early Christian church gave us Halloween, All Saints and All Souls, so that we could remember that fear and superstitions have been replaced by the joy of the resurrection and the reality of eternal life. The island of Iona is one of my favourite holiday retreat venues. The first time I went, I was amazed at how special a place it seemed, even with hundreds of tourists milling about. I later read that George MacLeod, the founder of the Iona community, referred to Iona as a thin place on earth, where the solid realm and the spiritual realm almost seem to touch. November is thought of as the thinnest time of year, the season at which the veil between time and eternity can easily become transparent. And it is a time when even we in our high-tech world can sometimes sense the age-old battle of good and evil being fought out. We know the outcome, of course, but the Celtic Christians were good at protective prayers and charms which still calm my soul and I'm sure the souls of many who read them. Be each saint in heaven, each sainted woman in heaven, each angel in heaven stretching their arms for you, smoothing the way for you when you go thither over the river hard to see or when you go thither home over the river hard to see. Or this one, also from a collection of old Gallic blessings. The sacred three, my fortress be, encircling me, come and be round my hearth, my home. The nights are fair drawn in. That'll be the conversation starter for the next wee while now. As we enter this time of darkness, do we have the patience, the faith, the ability to sit out the dead time? Can we use this time to face our fears, to cry because we remember our happier past? to weep at the way Christ is forgotten in our world and the symbols of even commended, to search for God in the dark, hoping that God is likewise searching for us. Dare we put our fragile lives into God's hands in this way? Or will we just skip November with its doom and gloom and start the Christmas preparations, putting on the glitzy Christmas lights and start thinking thoughts of babies, mangers, kings and turkeys? November is about having patience and taking time, neither of which our society values or encourages. I'm going to finish with another prayer by David Adam called Until the Tide Turns. Lord, I wait for the tide to turn until the distant becomes close, until the far off becomes near, until the outside is within, until the ebb flows. Lord, I wait for the tide to turn, until weakness is made strong, 
until blindness turns to sight, until the fractured is made whole, until the ebb flows. Lord, I wait until the tide turns, until the ordinary becomes strange, until the empty is presence full, until the two become one, until the ebb flows. Amen. Let all the earth acclaim God, sing to the glory of God's name. Come and see what God has done, let the sound of praise be heard. Blessed is God, who has not withdrawn from us love and care. Let us pray. God of wisdom and love, giver of all good things, we thank you for your loving kindness and for your constant care over all creation. We bless you for the gift of life, for your guiding hand upon us and your sustaining love within us. We thank you for friendship and duty, for good hopes and precious memories, for the joys that cheer us and the trials that teach us to trust in you. We bless you for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour, for the living presence of your Spirit, for your Church, the Body of Christ, for the ministry of Word and Sacrament and all the means of grace. Heavenly Parent, we pray for the Church. Transform this broken body into a communion of saints, a company of the faithful, working for good in your world. O oh God, have mercy and wipe away our tears. We pray for the world. Destroy the shroud of death that is spread over the nations. Replace the rule of wealth and war with your realm of justice and peace. O oh God, have mercy and wipe away our tears. We pray for our communities. Make your home among us. Dwell with us. Let us be communities of heavenly peace, a place of refuge for all. O oh God, have mercy and wipe away our tears. We pray for our loved ones, soothe those who are suffering, comfort those who mourn. O oh God, have mercy and wipe away our tears. O oh God, as you have sustained your saints through centuries of service, keep us faithful here and now until your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Once again, it's been a privilege to share worship with you. This week, may we live our lives giving God thanks and praise, dedicating to God our thoughts, our words, our gifts and our deeds, the working of our hands, the thinking of our minds and the loving of our hearts. And now a blessing. May we be at peace among ourselves and love one another. May we follow the example of good folk of old and may God comfort us and help us both in this world and in the world which is to come. And the blessing of God, Creator, Son and I'm Holy Spirit be with us now winds. and forevermore. Amen. Those jelly winds don't blow I'm going where those chilly winds don't blow I'm going where those chilly winds Those chilly winds don't blow I'm going to my lonesome, lonesome home I'm going to my lonesome home Going to my love.